Hey guys, Neurogal here. Today I'm going to talk with you about curiosity and why it's so important for the state of flow. Whoever thought of the axiom curiosity killed the cat was probably a very boring person. Let me tell you why. I spoke in a previous video about the flow state and how flow is the most satisfying experience a human can have, greater than even happiness, because happiness is often a fleeting and superficial emotion. For those of you who aren't familiar with flow, flow state involves complete immersion in what one is doing to the point where the self, time, and distractions melt away and the only thing that exists are the action that the person is performing. It can be as complex as working on a piece of art or working on the mechanics of a car to as superficially ordinary as mowing the lawn or cleaning the house. It really all depends on your perspective. One of the important keys to developing more flow in your life is developing a sense of curiosity. If you devote your life to curiosity, everything will become a whole lot more interesting to you. Therefore, your life will become a lot richer. Most of us have devoted all of our attention to cope with the stressful demands of life and thus have little room to be curious about the universe, nature, consciousness, really anything. But without curiosity, your life becomes dull and empty. If you have not developed a sense of curiosity, I recommend that you begin to do it now before it's too late and you're on your deathbed wondering where your life and time went. In this video, I'm going to teach you five steps to developing or cultivating your sense of curiosity. And these are based on psychology and neurological principles. Step number one, concentrate on tasks even routine tasks that need to be done. Develop that habit of doing what needs to be done with undivided attention and concentration. Even the most routine of tasks can become more rewarding if we approach them with the same care and attention that we would to make a piece of art. Need to mow the lawn? Figure out a way to do it more efficiently. Need to wash the dishes? Figure out a different way to get the chore done more quickly. Step number two, do more of what enriches your life and do less of what leaves you feeling empty. Transfer psychic energy every day to things that you enjoy but that you don't do enough of because they take too much energy to set up. For instance, you may enjoy painting, but you may feel it takes too long to set up the easel and the paints and the brushes. You may enjoy the feeling you get after working out at the gym, but it takes too much energy to put on your gym clothes and drive to the gym. Do more of these enriching activities and do less of the activities that may be easy to access but leave you feeling empty inside, such as watching television or scrolling through social media. Bottom line is that things don't start to become interesting or enriching until you invest a little energy up front. Step number three, don't make lack of time an excuse. Time stress is one of the most common complaints today. People say they don't have time for themselves, they don't have time to work out, they don't have time to pursue hobbies, but really this is just an excuse that people give themselves to absolve themselves of any responsibility for taking control over their lives. How many things that you do each day are truly necessary? How much more time could you have on your hands if you learn to prioritize and organize your schedule? Think about the activities that you do every single day that are useless. For instance, scrolling through social media. The average person spends nearly two hours every day on social media. That translates to five years over the total span of a person's life. Do you really want to waste five years of your life on something that leaves you feeling empty inside? If you're having trouble prioritizing and organizing your schedule, I recommend buying a planner and writing out your week and your day ahead of time. For instance, every morning I take my planner, I don't know where it is, I should, I think it's downstairs. I take my planner and I think about everything that I want to do and everything that I need to do and I do it. Also, think about removing yourself from social media platforms altogether. I took myself off of Facebook and since I've done this, I've had more time to dedicate to reading books, writing on my blog, neurogal.com, and making informational YouTube videos despite my busy day job as a physician. Step number four, learn to control your concentration. Instead of waiting for some external stimulus in your environment to entertain you, you must learn to concentrate your attention at will. 
Being able to concentrate on something at will can result in a sort of feedback loop. Just as being interested in something will allow you to focus on it, the opposite works as well. If you're able to focus your attention on anything at will, you'll most likely become interested in it. On the surface, most things in your surrounding may not seem interesting at all. Rocks, plants, the history of World War II, running for the sake of running. However, if one takes time to focus on these actions or objects, they will blossom into very interesting topics. What happens when you can't concentrate your attention? Your mind physically and emotionally begins to unravel. Flow psychologist Dr. Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi calls this mind unraveling phenomenon psychic entropy. Controlling your attention means controlling what you choose to perceive in your reality. When you cannot control your attention, you become controlled by the whim of your external experiences. As a result, uncontrollable anxiety rushes into your mind because you feel that you have no control over your life, and you don't. Allowing your environment to control your attention will leave very little energy for curiosity. There's a lot of pain in life and a lot of pain and suffering. And if you focus and, and dwell and ruminate on that physical and emotional pain, then your reality becomes just that. The more energy we invest in pain, the more real it becomes. Obviously, you shouldn't ignore or suppress these painful experiences or thoughts because if you do, your psychic energy will then become consumed with suppressing these pains that are trying to be released. It's best to confront painful emotions and events in life voluntarily and head on. Deal with them, respect their presence, and then move on to focusing your attention on what you choose to focus on. So the fifth step to creating a sense of curiosity is to embrace your darkness. Everyone has a dark side. Carl Jung called this the shadow. Often people shy away from their darkness because it makes them uncomfortable or makes them feel badly about themselves. It is especially difficult to accept one's darkness if you lack self-esteem or don't have a unconditional love from friends or family, or if you feel shameful that your darkness is darker than what should be acceptable. For instance, aggressive impulses, shameful experiences, or unacceptable sexual desires. However, once a person becomes comfortable with curious exploration of their dark aspects of their personality, they may find it to be a rich source of creativity, meaning, and inspiration. Many pieces of literature and mythology focus on the shadow archetype of human beings. And without this shadow, these pieces of literature, these movies, these myths lack their appeal. Once we recognize that this limitation imposed by our shadows can be a source of strength if we only explore it with curiosity, we can do amazing things with our lives. In summary, in order to cultivate your curiosity, you must concentrate on tasks, even routine tasks that need to be done, do more of what enriches your life and do less of what leaves you feeling empty inside, don't make lack of time an excuse, just do it. Learn to control your concentration and attention. And finally, embrace and explore your darkness. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel for more insightful videos like this. And please make sure to leave comments and hit that like button. I really appreciate it.